Hey everybody, I'm Shauna and welcome back to my channel, Shauna Missy Me HD, where I strive to inform, encourage, and motivate you to reach your educational goals and help you gain admission into undergraduate and graduate health-related programs. And today I'm talking about pre-med advice for future anesthesiologists. Uh, don't get me started. But before we get started, you guys know what to do. Go ahead and press subscribe and make sure you press the notification bell so that you're the first to know when I release the next video. So I want to emphasize that even though this video is about future anesthesiologists, all of this advice and all of the key points apply to any specialty that you're interested in, whether it's surgery, pediatrics, OB, neurology, dermatology, it doesn't matter. It applies to any specialty, okay? But just for the purposes of this video and my audience, I'm gonna reference anesthesia and everything, but all of this applies to any specialty that you may be interested in. So my first tip and a piece of advice, I say this on like all of my videos, is that your major in college really does not matter. Now there are some people who may say that physics may be a great option uh, for you to major in because there's a lot of physics applied to anesthesia, which is very true. Uh, anesthesia is very physics and pharmacy heavy. But um, the thing about majoring in college and getting into med school is that you don't wanna just major in something because you think it's gonna get you to anesthesia or to surgery, right? You wanna major in something that you like, number one, because if you like it, you're more likely to study. And if you're more likely to study, you're more likely to do well. And you need to do well in your courses in college because your GPA does matter and your MCAT does matter. So I always recommend majoring in something that you're at least interested in or willing to work hard enough in to do well and get a good GPA. Don't try to major in something that you think is related to anesthesia. And Guys, anesthesiology is not a major. You cannot major in anesthesia, all right? You can't major in surgery. You can't even major in medicine. You have to major in a science or, or political science or English or kinesiology or something, and then you go to med school to get your medical degree. So major does not matter, guys. Do what you like, do what you love, do what interests you, do well, get a good GPA. My next tip of advice is to shadow as much as possible. Now, while you're in high school or in college, shadow any doctor. Shadow any any doctor or get a job as a scribe or something like that. It doesn't matter who you shadow, just shadow somebody. But in medical school, you want to start reaching out to faculty and staff that are in the specialty that you're interested in and shadow them in case you're not able to get an elective or if you don't want to wait until your third or fourth year to see what anesthesia is like or dermatology is like or surgery is like, right? So you can go ahead and start shadowing faculty early in medical school. Just make sure it's targeted. Say you're interested in two or three specialties. Shadow all three, like reach out to faculty in your medical school and shadow them. Again, if you're in high school or college, you may not have access to doctors like that. So whoever you can get your hands on, that's who you want to shadow. Get as much experience as possible. It'll help you figure out if that specialty is for you or if medicine is for you in general. So while in college, you want to join as many pre-health professions programs or clubs that your school offers. Same thing for medical school. When you're interested in a certain specialty, go ahead and join those clubs day one of medical school. Even if you're interested in several, join all three, all four, because you don't want to not start that networking process, right? So say you're interested in anesthesia, OB, dermatology, and surgery. I keep saying the same four because they're on my head. But anyway, join all four, right? Get to know all the other students who are interested, the faculty who help support the organization, uh, clubs and meetings and everything that they have, associations, all that type of stuff. Get involved. And as you go throughout um, med school, you'll start to narrow down what you like and what you don't like. And at least you would have already started to build and develop that relationship within that particular organization if you choose uh, to follow that, to go into that specialty. So start early, same with college, same with high school, whatever clubs are offered, don't be lazy, get involved, be active, try to hold a position and just know that everything that you participate in now is just gonna help you boost your application to get into medical school. Now this next piece of advice is extremely important regardless of the specialty that you choose. You wanna become familiar with the average scores 
of the students who actually match into a specialty. Now, I'll be the first to say that I got into anesthesia and my scores were not average. I was kind of below average actually. And um, I took a chance with my scores, right? With my application, I put myself out there, did what I had to do. And I luckily, or thanks to God, I matched into anesthesia, but you really wanna know what your target score is for your preferred specialty. So for anesthesia, traditionally, the target score for uh, step one is somewhere between a 220 and a 230 if you're an MD applicant or a US applicant. And then just based off what I've heard and what I've been told, okay, guys, I don't have facts. I, you, I can't fact check any of this. For DO students or international students, you may need to score a little higher. Now, I'm also aware of the changes being made to the step one exam uh, becoming pass fail. With this being said, I'm not really sure how schools or how uh, residency programs are going to rank students. Scores provide residency programs the opportunity to weed out certain applicants before they even extend interviews. So with step one or complex one or whatever uh, you take, with it going to you know pass fail, I'm not really sure how that's gonna affect um, you guys when you apply to residency, but all in all, just be familiar with scores, okay? Even MCAT scores, if there's a certain uh, medical school that you wanna go to and you really, really love this school, you need to know what the average MCAT score is. Like, you just need to know. You need to know what the average GPA is for students who actually go to that school so that you can make sure you're setting your target scores high enough to be able to be a competitive applicant for that program. So be familiar with all of that. Start your research early. Speaking of research, if you have the opportunity to do research in college, do it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be medicine related. It doesn't, it could be science based. It could be clinical based. Um, it could be some community service project that's considered research. Do it. Whatever you can do, just do it. Um, it cannot hurt you, right? It may take up time. It may not come with a stipend. You may not get paid for it. But point is, you can add it to your resume and it can help you get into medical school. And then my last piece of advice is if you have the opportunity to take the anesthesia elective in medical school, please do it as soon as you can, whether it's the end of your second year or your third year or your fourth year, do as many anesthesia electives as possible. If your medical school doesn't already incorporate an anesthesia rotation into your curriculum, and the reason why you want to do as many electives as possible is because you want to develop relationships. Again, there's that word, right? You want to already be associated with the other anesthesia residents and the 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 uh, anesthesia faculty. And like I said, if it's dermatology, dermatology residents, dermatology faculty, you want to be associated with these people so that when it comes time to rank you, right? They say, oh, I remember her, she was this, or I remember him, and he was so helpful and so motivated and, and involved, right? Or even more important, let us a recommendation because you may not be a strong candidate for your home institution, but faculty at your home institution can write you letters of recommendation for another program and you may end up getting in there. So be involved, do electives, speak up, answer questions, ask questions, even if you're wrong, who cares? Just be verbal, be noticed, be recognized, and that'll help you get your foot in the door. So I hope this video was helpful. As always, leave comments below, send me messages on Instagram, and you guys have a great day.